Welcome back, Warriors. Yay. We are so excited you're here with us this week. Yes. We are going to be talking with you all today about the unspoken, sometimes spoken, but the unspoken anxiety of competition. Ooh, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Competition. <laughs> I get immediate sweats when I hear Ooh. the word competition. I mean, I okay. sweat all the time anyway. I'm a pretty sweaty person naturally, but, or I'm freezing. I'm either sweating or freezing. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Both things are liable to happen if I'm in the middle of something competitive in any which could you form. win a competition for sweating hundred percent yeah I unless, could also, unless you're against me we might tie for first we might be tied for first yeah also I could probably win a competition for teeth chattering because I cold. do a lot when I'm freezing like yeah it's so involuntary Adam always feels so amazed he's like oh my god are you okay <laughs> It's really rough sometimes. Like, yeah, I'm not just freezing like my whole body. No, it's like really in the bones. Reacts. Yeah. In the like bones. a hot shower will stop it. Yeah, but I, I mean, I don't know. I've never I've never been able to take a hot shower oh, when this the, is happening. Oh, okay. It's like yeah. I'm in the middle of outdoors or I'm yeah. at a place where hot shower is not in imminent. Imminent? That imminent. sounds good. Imminent. There we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I was like, I'm close. I'm rounding the corner <laughs> to the right word. Imminent. All right, warriors. All this to say that yes. we have, I have, and both of us agree that we have some feelings yes. surrounding being competitive. Yes. This, the, the idea of competition, being in competition with other people, competing with your former self, even yeah. sometimes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I feel Ooh. like I'm in more competition with my former self. Yeah. And I am with others. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because now, now I have a lot to say. Interesting. Yeah. So like this was, this was a random topic idea that I brought up to Abby pretty recently, actually. I feel Mm -hmm. like it was just a few weeks back. And, um, of course I sent it to you via voice note and it was like two and a half minutes. And I was very passionate about why we should talk about this topic. And then I immediately forgot all the things about why I shared it with you. Cause yeah. that's how my brain works sometimes yeah. in my anxious brain. Um, but in thinking about this conversation and thinking about this chat, what keeps coming up for me over and over again is how I feel like we we're taught from a young age, whether it's implicit or explicit that there's competition with everyone around you. Yes. <laughs> that it's you against everyone else in the world somehow. Yeah. Even like simple things like relay races or, you know, putting up your art project for, um, Mm -hmm. some kind of an award or whatever. Science fair project. Yeah. Or like when your parents force you into different sports and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Now I don't have a lot of personal experience with that. I never played sports as a kid. Yeah. I always danced but I didn't dance competitively till years and years after childhood Mm -hmm. or certainly not early childhood. And so like, I didn't have any, I don't have any core concrete memories of why competition and the idea of competition has given me anxiety. I just know that it does. Yeah. One of those anxieties that I just feel like a hum underneath the surface, like all the time, whether it's with other people whether it's with myself, my former self, which we can get into, but like Mm -hmm. for some reason, that's why I think the word unspoken is so important to this topic because it's like, we're given messages from an early age that we're, it's all enough for everybody. There's not enough resources for everybody. And Mm -hmm. I feel like those resources could be like awards, not everyone I mean, now sometimes they're doing the participation trophy, but right. But not everyone wins the, you know, world series. Right. Right. Um, But also like, you know, not everyone gets the love of the teacher. Like, I feel like that was something that was a message growing up is we were competing for our teacher to like us. And we didn't understand that our teachers were also humans and sometimes kind of jerks. My fourth grade teacher, total jerk. Um, But we were competing for for her to like us. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Or even like, you know, uh, competition for like, um, who's going to get married first. Like, I don't think that that was like an explicit competition. And, and when friends got married, I was always happy for them, but there was also this like, ah, I'm falling behind. Right. It's society. It's patriarchy. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Exactly. Or even like um, when it comes to like practicing yoga, right? Mm -hmm. There's the unspoken competition. Who does the poses better? Even though there's right or wrong way to do poses. Yes. Um, And so like, I'm like, I'm mad at my lung capacity. Yes. (laughs) Because I can't take as deep a breath as the guy next to me. Yes. Yes. Or, or some person that like has, you know, deeper hip sockets can do a better warrior one than me. Right. And it's like, Oh, I can't believe I didn't get my hip sockets deeper before I started (laughs) practicing yoga. You know, like (laughs) you must be terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, right. I just think that we're constantly given this message from a very young age. There's not enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. And the people you're in competition with are usually your friends, your peers, your colleagues. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I know I've personally felt all of those things. Yeah. Like in competition with all those groups of people. Right. And it's like, Especially, you know, I mean, look, my memory is stronger about stuff that's happened in more recent years. Okay. So like for me, it's about at this, in this moment, in the past several years, it's about being a small business. It's about Mm -hmm. trying to do something in a niche and having now more people are doing that niche. And so trying to stand out, trying to make sure I'm up on the latest trends and doing more reading and research mm-hmm. and how can I improve upon this? And some of that's just learning. And, and that's awesome. Cause especially people that are in service to children or to families or whatever, we want to be the best we can be so we can serve other people. So of course I'm happy to do and learn and keep growing and evolving. Right. But at the same time, I also feel intense pressure to do all of those things. Right. Otherwise, you know, and right. even as my, in my years of being a classroom teacher, like on Long Island, for every one job, there's 800 applicants. Yikes. Now, that was many years ago, and right. the teaching profession has changed a lot, especially mm-hmm. over the last two decades. And so a lot more people are leaving the field than there are entering it. So, But Long Island is, I mean, I'm in the downstate part of New York. People have a lot of money down here, and the school districts pay really, really well, some of the highest mm-hmm. in the country. Mm-hmm. And so people are fight fighting tooth and nail for jobs here on the mm-hmm. island. So like, I remember when I first left college and it was like, I didn't feel like I had any kind of shot to get any kind of decent paying job here, like as a teacher, you know, like, right. and so it's like, you're immediately, uh, even just the number alone, like, guess what? You just graduated. Now you're in immediate competition with 800 applicants for one job. It's like, right. I have felt immediate defeat just before I even like applied. Right. And it and, definitely affected my mental health and my anxiety about even bothering trying right. to go for it. And, but on top of that, you still had to live and you might've had student loans you had to pay off and you might've mm-hmm. had like money that you needed for a car or for gas or for public transportation, right? And so aside from that, okay, now I'm in competition with 800 other people for a role, right? It's not like you can just keep applying without like stressing out about also, wait, I need to be able to make money to survive. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Need to function in society and <laughs> be a contributing member, which again is more like it's more outside pressure mm-hmm. um, and less about, you know, what's going on in my own head or would that even have been in my head if it wasn't for that outside pressure. Right. Um, but yeah, just like thinking back to childhood and all throughout my life, I've just always hated games. I hate the concepts of winners and losers. I hate seeing people cry. I hate crying myself. I hate disappointment. Like these things are so uncomfortable and they just seem so unfun. Like mm-hmm. people that love sports and games are like crazy people for to me. Like I <laughs> genuinely don't understand people that are obsessed with sports and games. I'm like, you know, my husband loves games. He's been, I mean, and he thrives in in that environment. And Mm. like, I know plenty of people from, from our lives grew up playing competitive sports and doing competitively. And I get that it's very fulfilling for some people and it, it offers them an outlet and a community and, um, you know, a space to be themselves where it pushes them. And I can appreciate those things objectively, but I've always felt like not smart enough, not good enough. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm, I'm a failure if I lose this thing. Mm-hmm. And so I don't want to do it. I don't want yeah. to be in competition. That's, that isn't, there's already enough competition. I feel like in the world and 
through messages from childhood through now in the real world, why am I going to impose more competition on my own self, my anxious right. self with stupid things like games? And- right. Right. And we were like forced to play games, especially in like yeah. elementary yeah. school and high school. We right. were forced to do it. It was part of participating. And then, but we were also forced to like pick people for teams and have someone picked last. Who came and- up with that? <laughs> Stupid idea. Yeah, it's horrible. It's horrible. For young kids. Like, yeah, yeah, sure. When, if you're, if you're picking teams for a professional volleyball team, like you need mm-hmm. your players to be good. But right. when you're seven years old. Yeah. 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 I mean, I remember even like in childhood, like I can totally relate to like, you know, I, I don't think I have as much, you know, dislike for competitive sports and games as you, but I could definitely can relate to, especially like, you know, and like playing dodgeball. Like I did not like playing that one because I didn't like getting hit in the face with rubber balls. Um, <laughs> but two, it was like, it just felt mean. It felt mean pegging people with balls so your team could win. Right. Right. But when I was thinking about also in, in childhood, like, I mean, there was always this unspoken competition around the holidays of what gifts did you get with your mm, friends? Yeah. Right. And I had a friend who was like upper middle class and I was not upper middle class. And I always remembered hating talking to her around the holidays because she would get the coolest gifts. And it always made me feel like I needed to make my gifts sound cooler Mm. because we were in competition for cool gifts, right? Like I can't even like explain it, but that was something I thought of. Um, Or like in high school, there was like the competition for, you know, are your friends like making friends with the cool kids or being invited to the cool parties or, you know, the competition of who's going to get the attention of the guy that everyone's crushing on. Mm. Right. And so I remember all of that too. And in the unspoken competition. And one of the things that I remember, especially with one friend was that we were supposed to be like really good friends. Right. Mm -hmm. And yet I remember she would always tear me down in certain situations. And so guess what I learned? And this is the same one with the gifts from, from like the holidays, I would tear her down too. Yeah. Right. Because like, I remember her like teasing me when we were in like front of the guy that we both had a crush on. Mm-hmm. And, and so what I learned was, okay, one, not everyone can have the guy we had a crush on. Right. <laughs> but two, the way that you then navigate that challenge is by tearing someone else down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't relate. I can't relate to that part of it, but when you said about like the gifts thing, it made me think about who's got the best clothes. Yeah. That was always for me. It was like, who's got the latest trend and mm-hmm. it wasn't really about money. Right. Cause I always, I grew up extremely comfortably, but my parents didn't prioritize things like the, the expensive brands. Right. And so like yeah. when I would want something that costs a little bit more, my mom's like, excuse you, like, <laughs> you know, and, and I was never denied anything within reason. Right. Mm-hmm. I also wasn't given everything I wanted, which I'm really grateful for. Right. In yeah. hindsight that I wasn't just like handed anything I, my heart desired before right. I had a job and an income of my own. Right. And then once I started working, it was like, okay, I'm going to save my money for that cool thing I want. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was great values to learn there. I'm not, you know, not crapping on any of that mom and dad. Um, but yeah, it's just like, oh man, that person has that awesome new trend. Yeah. I really want that, but it's kind of expensive and I'm probably going to have to wait a long time for it. And maybe by then it's not cool anymore. Right. So like, I already had that anxiety in my head. Like by the time I get this cool thing, it's not cool anymore. And like, I do relate to what you said about the friend when it comes to like gifts, but I didn't experience that until like my late teens, Mm. early twenties. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm curious, like for you, when, and if, if it did, when did that kind of stop for you with that friend or, or the concept of competition when it came to like, when it came to like tearing each other down or was that just solo with this person? I think it was just that with other, was that like a a new defense mechanism with other people? I think it was mostly just with her, okay. but because we were friends basically from second grade until about four or five years ago, um, right. you know, uh, it was very ingrained in our friendship with each other. 
you yeah. know, and so, you know, but that's, you know, for some reason, she and I thought we were in competition with each other. I don't know why we thought that. Right. Mm. Well, it's like one of you thinks that and then you get those vibes. Right. Yeah. And so you, you adopt the mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And I think, I mean, I think, you know, as we got older and became more adults, like there was less tearing each other down, Mm -hmm. but there was still some of that. Like, I remember like telling her about things like, like wanting to do or thinking about and, and her gut was to like tear it down before supporting me. Right. Uh, And so it made her feel better. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. Like she was just upset about herself. She was super insecure. um, It sounds like. She was unhappy in her life. I can say that like back then that was her thing. And so, right. You know, misery loves company. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's so but interesting. It's definitely like changed to like where I am now with competition, because for me now, I feel like exactly what you said, like the most competition really is like me in competition with old me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, me from a couple of years ago or me yeah. from how I think my future self should be or, you know, yes, the yeah, yeah. So, okay. So what about you for like now? Like how does competition show up for you now at this age? Um, I, I kind of mentioned briefly before it's, it just, it feels like I'm in competition with, to have a seat at the table, right. In terms of work situations, you know, our job is very niche. Mm -hmm. And so there's only going to be say one of me in any Mm -hmm. setting, any school or site or whatever, as a kids yoga and mindfulness teacher. And so it's like, how do I get myself to be the one? Yeah. Right. And if I'm not selected, there's like navigating the disappointment and the self-doubt rejection syndrome and the rejection. Right. And just, and um, I have my process for getting through that, which we Mm -hmm. can talk about. Right. But like, that's kind of where I notice it coming up the most now. Yeah. The, the one paradox I will say though, is that social media and my, the community that I feel like we have with the people that do what we do in the, in the wellness world or in the mindfulness world, or, um, working with kids, you mm-hmm. know, one-to-one or in small groups and that kind of thing, teaching is that there's a lot of competition on social media, but if you handle it the right way, mm-hmm. you can really build community and the ability to sort of find ways to elevate each other yeah, and like finding a little bit more of like abundance mindset yeah, and practicing it as a mindset. Like there's enough room for all of us. We all may be working in the same niche, but we all bring something different, unique and special to it. And remembering I'm not for everyone. Right. Right. And it's okay that I'm not for everyone. Doesn't yeah. make me a bad yoga teacher. It doesn't make me a bad mindfulness teacher. It doesn't mean I'm the, you know, not a good children's author. It just means that maybe I, my price was out of range. Maybe, I mean, it, there's a million factors, right. Right? right? Why someone's not selected or doesn't win the game, right. you know, again, metaphorically, but that's kind of where I notice it coming up the most. Mm-hmm. And, and a little bit of like, this is going to sound kind of petty, but like maybe not pet, petty is the wrong word. I feel like I'm in competition with people's phones. Ah, wow. Like sometimes if I'm out with, even with, with Adam or with other people and like, if someone's on their phone and I've done this too, yeah, like, yeah. sometimes I try to be mindful of it. I'm like, Oh shit. Like, I'm sorry. I feel like I've been on my phone for a minute. And then I try to tell the person, this is what I've been doing. I'm going to be done in like one more minute right, or whatever. But I'm like, hello, I'm here. Right. Like pay yes. attention to me, put your phone down, move I away from it. Like whatever. So glad you're saying that. Cause that is definitely an unspoken competition too. Right? Me it's and like other fighting- people's phones. Yeah. I just want to bat it out of people's hands sometimes. Like you're right. being rude. I don't know if you know you're being rude. I know if, but then I, I try to be, I try to be honest with myself and reflective. Like, I feel like I'm pretty good if I was if I'm at a dinner table with people about keeping my phone away mm-hmm. and, you know, sometimes it's a struggle. And I try to let people know, like I've been in the middle of a text exchange with, with Abby for a little bit. We're working mm-hmm. on something about the podcast. Like, there are times when you're going to have to be plugged in and there's some understanding there. If you have open communication with the person that you're with or people that you're with, but sometimes if you don't have that relationship with them, or you feel like that you'll be what your feelings will be rejected by them. Mm -hmm. If you ask them to put their phone away or they'll get angry or defensive or whatever, Mm -hmm. it just feels like that's another unspoken one too. Yes, I don't want to compete with the, you can't listen to me 
and be on your phone. Exactly. You can't. Period. Period. Yes. (laughs) Period. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Choose one. I'll get on my phone too. We can both sit next to each other. Why are we even hanging out and be on our phones (laughs) together? But right. You can't, you can't be scrolling or texting and also be listening to me. Period. Period. I love it. So glad you added the period. Um, I have a question. Yeah. That I'm just thinking about right now. If you and I lived in the same town, Mm -hmm. do you think our friendship would be different if we were both looking for the same opportunities teaching kids yoga? No. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, it's really hard for me to imagine. Well, it's just hard to imagine because that's never been the case through our friendship. Right. Even when you lived in New York, we really right. weren't competing for the same jobs. No. So and some of us yeah. are like older and you like younger. But I was yes. just thinking about like, I don't like, think so. Because yeah. because of our the dynamic of our friendship. I think I we don't would think support each other. A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Okay. I was I just so like, too. yeah, I was thinking about that because I feel like my go to is to I mean, I've I've done stuff where like I support other people more than me. Like that's yeah. something that I do is like, um, like if someone's looking for something and I know I'm qualified to do it, I'm like, but let me tell you about all these other amazing people you should, ah. look into, you know, like, do you think that's imposter syndrome or because you just feel like you want to be supportive? I think I will. I don't know if I think it's imposter syndrome, but I think it's like trying like to really spread the wealth, even mm. though it's like. You, know? you could use it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's a really good point. It's like, yeah. how often are we sometimes there is a point where you're like, okay, but I need to, I still need stuff. Right. Right. When right. do you take when yeah. you can, right. If the opportunity and the iron is, you know, the iron's hot, shouldn't you take it? Yeah. Right. Do yeah. You have to gift it to other people. Now, if it's, if you feel like, ah, oh, you know, it's a little bit of a distance for me, or it might be a challenge, or I feel like that other person might be more in that person's mm-hmm. price range or a little bit more of a niche, then, okay. You might pass the buck. Right. But it's like, you're shutting yourself down. It sounds like before you even attempt to say, actually, I also have that same skill set, and I yes. can provide you with that, exactly what you're asking for. I think it's just like the having a hard time selling myself. Like it's easier to sell other people. Totally. You know, it's like, totally. but, but like when I used to do those, like, um, those, uh, teacher trainings for adults on how to teach kids. Right. Yeah. I, I was so of the mindset, like I felt pretty comfortable in the amount of money I was making and in the amount of work I was getting. Right. And I like, I made it, I made it like a a priority to share other people in the training one. So people felt like they had resources, but, but two, so that like, they knew that there was other, not everyone does it like me. Right. And so I remember like when people would ask questions like you were one of the people I told people to follow like they would ask me stuff on preschool and I could give a basic answer right I've taught preschoolers but I'm not as good as you at teaching preschool I do the same thing for you at teens yeah I'm like go to my friend Abby (laughs) it's like I can tell you stuff but if you really want to know stuff and like I would do that like with Raina when people would ask about like social emotional learning and I would do that with Lauren and I would do that with Crystal. Like I always made it like very intentional of sharing other people's names. And like when people would like look for mentors, I was like, ask for Margo or for Lauren, right? Like, yeah. like I wasn't all about hoarding at that point. So that yes. like for me, it, it's, it's easy now to share the wealth. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel like part of what I've learned too, and in my own process and reflection of how I've handled competition more recently Mm -hmm. is because of that is because of people like you, right? I feel like I've had enough bad models of what not to do and enough good models in the industry, right? If we're going to, if we're sticking to like industry or, or just work in general, if you have enough good models of people that are sharing the wealth that are willing to say your name in a room filled with other people, right? Like the concept of like elevating you elevates me, Mm -hmm. right? It just puts out good to the world. I feel like I believe in that myself. So like, I I hear you there. Like to me, having witnessing other people 
speaking for us, right. Speaking for myself, my personal experience who are in the field that I'm in, that we're in and are so good and open, right. And so willing to spread the wealth and share has made me want to do those things too and feel less competitive and be able to let go of my losses in a, in a better way. And like when they're honest about their failures too, like, I feel like so much better about myself when people are really authentic and honest about all the times that they tried and failed Yes, all the past projects that they thought were going to be home runs that were a big Mm -hmm. old flop, like in the business world, in the wellness world, in the whole world, we need more honesty about yes. our lives, about yeah. our struggles. Like that's the thing too. I, it, it came up for me when you were talking, it's just thinking about when you scroll through social media and you're looking at people's lives, right? They're, they're very special curated lives. Mm-hmm. Like we talked about this in our social media anxiety episode, you're looking at a snapshot in time. You're looking at a window that is professionally curated or curated by one person who wants to show you what they want to show you. Right. One of the things that I'm trying to share more is also how like the unspoken, you know, part of competition in the wellness and kids yoga field also showed up as like, not me tearing other sound, but me basically like jumping through every hoop possible to show that I was the one that they should hire. Mm, Cause when it's pleasing. like, yes. Yeah. And when it was like in the, in the independent contract world where, I mean, in a sense, there's not enough for everybody, especially if you're contracting with one particular company that constantly gives you that message, right? You know, if you don't respond to our email right away, you lose the job. If you don't do free stuff for us, you lose the jobs. Like, you know, and, um, and so the, my behavior and my behavior changed by like, I would always support other people. I would suggest other people for gigs and stuff, but I would always compromise my well being first. It would be like, mm. I can do it even though I'm already working X amount of hours and I'm working the weekend for you, you know? Um, yeah. Let me show you how many hoops I can jump through with a song and a dance to show you I'm the one for you. Yes. You want me to create for free stuff for your manual? Of course. I won't ask you to pay for my <laughs> IP, right? Like, you know, yeah. it's like, um, and so that was how it started to show up in the wellness world was I never tore other people down. Right. right. I never really looked at other people as like, they're my competition. I looked at it more as I got to do my ultimate best and say yes to everything. So I can get the work. Yeah. No, I resonate with that so hard. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's the in competition with yourself too. It's like, mm-hmm. I, I kind of heard that when you mm-hmm. were just speaking about that too. Cause it's like, if you're not tearing other people down and you're not saying don't hire that person and making right. stuff up about them or whatever. Right. Um, but you're saying like, I better do it all. Yes. Right. And if I used to do it all and now I don't, that means I'm less than or not as good anymore. Or it like, means I get I'm less work, <laughs> right? I'm going to be turned away for that job or whatever. Mm-hmm. I, I, I feel you yeah. feel on that. So how do you practice navigating it when you notice that competitive side comes up? Yeah. So it's a lot of practicing letting go. Yeah. And being really, um, learning to be okay with how long it takes me to let go sometimes. Mm -hmm. Cause then I wind up getting feeling frustrated with myself that I should have let go of this thing faster or earlier. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, it's beating myself down about my emotions and the way I feel about losing that thing or having that thing not go as planned or failing or whatever going to help me do better next time. Like probably not. Right. So like being really compassionate and saying, if it took me 24 hours to let go of that thing, it's okay. Yeah. If it took me a mm-hmm. week to let go of that thing, you're still great. Yeah. <laughs> love you. Right. Looking at myself and saying, I love you. You're doing the best you can. And the best you can might've been 24 hours to yeah. let go. The best right. you can may have been a month. Guess what? You did it. You let it go. Right. So practicing letting go of what I should be doing, what I should be doing better, what I should, a job I should have gotten, but didn't mm-hmm. lost to that person or mm-hmm. even what it's not work related. Right. Just in any situation, it feels like being kind to myself when letting go is hard while also being steadfast in my trying and actively practicing letting it go. Yeah. Um, trying to have the mindset and belief that like what's meant for me will find me. I love that. Yeah. And right. And just that's helped in my letting go. Right. It's yeah. sort of, they go hand in hand. It's like, if it's, 
this wasn't meant to be. Maybe I wanted it, but it's not mine. <laughs> so I better learn to let it go. Right. Mm-hmm. Otherwise I'm going to be sitting with this un- discomfort forever. I'm going to be holding on to it forever. And so a lot of self-compassion has, has brought me to the, that place faster in some right. situations. And sometimes it takes longer. Um, I can do my best work hard and move on, you know, um, I'm able to get past the discomfort too by actively practicing joy and celebration mm, mm. for all the victories that I do have for all the little things, the little moments, truly savoring it, taking screenshots, taking mental pictures that's a throwback to the office, Yep, you know, trying to take the mental pictures of like moments that bring me nothing but jo- that, but joy and celebration mm-hmm. and remembering like, okay, you may not have all the things you want. You may not ever get all the things you want, even if you work really hard, but you have so much to be grateful for and celebrate. And you can find so much joy in that and those things. Um, yeah. And come to see those victories as vital to my well being, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. looking at every victory and saying, this tiny little thing is so important to my mental health. So I better celebrate it. Right. Um, and it's just, being in community with people that are loving and supportive, right? Like when we're in community, I feel so loved and supported, right? And just curating my community with such intention. Mm-hmm. So I'm not surrounded by that unnecessary competition right. when it already exists in the hum of the world in every shape and form. I can make sure that at the very least, the people that I'm ingesting in, in their energy and their time and through their voice does not offer me that anxiety Mm -hmm. of like, you're in competition with me, you know, right. Right. And we can, we can see each other through tough times. We can be honest about our experiences. We can talk about our failures. We can, um, say that we were bummed out by losing something or Mm -hmm. whatever it is and having a support system to help you through it and resonate, Mm -hmm. um, or listen and be able to say, you know what, but I still love you and you're still amazing. And you're going to get that next thing. And if you don't, well, don't worry about it. Right. That there's still there, there's enough for everyone and trying to have that more like abundance mindset and what's meant for me will find me eventually. So lots of letting go, lots of self-compassion, you know, and, and finding a supportive community that's been game changing. What about you? So when I, when I think about, when I notice the competitive spirit, mostly in work, right? Like, if there's other things, I, I don't, I, I haven't thought of it off the top of my head, but, but that would be in different things. But, but when I think about the competitive spirit in work, I remember, I always think about in 2011, I was in my first coaching program uh, with David Gershon and Gail Straub, and I love them. And David was talking about this story about how there being enough for everyone in the coaching field, which also mm. applies to teaching kids yoga field, right? There's, a ton of people out there, right? There's a ton of kids out there and that we can trust that we'll find the people for us, you know? And they, they said something like, um, kind of what you said before, like not everyone will be for us, right? Not everyone will like the type of coaching style I do, right? Uh, not everyone will like the way I teach kids yoga. They might think I'm too easy on kids or not easy enough on kids, you know? Um, and, and, but, but, that I'm doing this work as an act of service, as being of service to others. And that when we're really embodying this work as service to others, right, then we can be generous when things aren't a right fit for us and generous with the other people that might be the right fit. And, you know, um, and be of service by referring out when clients aren't, aren't right for us. And so that's like, when I think about competition, when it comes into the work world, it's really about embodying that I'm doing this work. I mean, I'm, I live in a capitalistic society. I have to make money. Right. Yeah. And I am also still doing this to be of service. Yeah. Right. And so it's really finding that balance of embodying this, this idea of being of service and being able to lift up others while also making sure that like we're nourished as well, or I'm yeah. nourished as well. I love that. That's Thanks. so good. Right. Just remembering that what we're doing is an act of service. Right. And when we, we can feel generous with it. Right. Yeah. When we feel, when we remember that we're not for everyone, we remember that 
our niche isn't necessarily what that person or that child needs, you know, who, who can I find who's in my inner circle that I trust that I know can do a great job or the very least interviewed by that person to see if they're a good fit. You know, I love that mindset. So is it about me or is it about the kid? Right. Yeah. It's about who's who's asking for the service. Who's in need. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. It's like, I want to believe that my, the ego part of my brain wants to believe that I'm perfect for everyone yep. and that I'm going to be of service regardless of my background and all my years of experience. When in reality, that is nowhere near the case. No, let me, nowhere near the case. let me tell you insight timer reviews show me repeatedly that I'm not for everyone. <laughs> and I think I'm a pretty damn good teacher. So. Those people are stupid. If anyone, <laughs> no, no one's listening. That's rated you badly on insight timer, but those people are just dumb. If you're listening and you did that, you're stupid. Just kidding. Not but I'm kidding, but to like, I'm not okay. To, like I'm so trying hard to be like, I'm just not for them, even though I think what I did was pretty phenomenal. Right. Like, well, I'm that's amazing though, for you to be able to still say what I did was phenomenal. Okay. I was them. not totally serious when I said, you know that. what I mean though? But like, yeah. you, if you put out something that means you were proud of it. Right. I know you, right. And you're a recovering perfectionist. You're doing so much better. I have to say, like just throwing props your way. You are really working that girl. You really are. I'm so proud of you in so many ways. But, you know, when you put something out there that you've spent time working on scripts, editing, uploading Mm -hmm. music, all the things, and it's a free practice, especially, or Mm -hmm. even if it's not free, like you put so much heart and soul into it. And yes, you're not going to be for everybody. And, yeah. you know, we learned in our conversation with Lou and right. many, with many of our guests, right? It's like, if you're not getting haters, you're not in the game. So yes. Like, yes. remembering that is so huge for yes. competition. I think shout out to Lou. Yes. That um, has stuck with me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, a, it's such a, that, and as a, somebody that hates competition and games and all the winning and losing mm-hmm. and the, you, get it and you don't kind of mentality that's been really supportive to me. Yeah. these past few months since our conversation with him, you know, so many of our guests enlighten us in so many ways. Mm-hmm. So grateful. Um, but yeah, that one, since Lou talked about, he was one of at least a couple of guests that talked a lot about competition, right. And how it feeds him yeah. in a way. And I'm so, I'm always so interested in that because it's so the opposite of where I'm coming from in, in a deep place. Yeah. You know, we really didn't talk much about this, but like, before we like start wrapping up, I'm dying to know about like, competition in the dating worlds because I have never oh, dated. Yeah. Like, I've been with Adam and I have been together for 22 years. Like we were children practically when yes. we were together. And so like, yes. I really have no idea what that even entails. And like quick aside, yeah. In my early twenties, like when my friends were looking for partners and yeah. stuff, and we would go out for girls night and I would get pissed yeah. that they were like, not engaged with girls night. And I'm like, what are you even doing? And like, again, looking in hindsight, I'm like, I wasn't compassionate to them. (laughs) They were looking for love and looking to find their person. And like, I was just like, I thought we were here to dance and have a good time. Like, (laughs) why are you leaving me alone on the dance floor? Like, and so I was thinking all about like, we had an intention for tonight, or at least I thought we did, mm-hmm. but intentions split off, especially when you're, you know, if you're seeking a partner and like I yes. you said before about being married, who's going to get married first. Like I definitely had feelings of that. Yeah. It's just like, especially since we had been together for so long, but we were mm-hmm. kids when we got together. And so like expectations, right. We didn't really yep. get into the expectations and how that lends itself to competition. Right. I mean, a little right. bit about patriarchy because right. marriage is patriarchy right. in a way. Right. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Right. And what society tells us where we should be at what age and yeah. You know, so I'm done. That. Just give me like a, give me like a, your abbreviated version yeah. or, I mean, go into it as long as you want, I guess. But like, what is that about? I mean, the first thing that I think of is like, you know, am I single with other friends? Because if I'm with my friends and we're going out to mingle, you know, like in my early 20s, like, you know, there was a lot of unspoken competition. And, mm-hmm. you know, That's like, interesting. yeah, it was, yeah, like just different things coming to mind and like going out to bars and like being with your friends, but then also like, you know, yeah. Showing how cool you are, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it makes sense. Um, but I feel like in, in, in some ways it's easier in some ways it's harder because, you know, in my thirties is when I tried online dating 
And so it's easier in the sense that like, you're not just like going out looking to meet people and seeing your other competition at the bars, right? right. Or the dance clubs or the restaurants or wherever you're going, flea markets, whatever, you know? Um, <laughs> oh, no. Where do people meet people? That you Pick see? up some guys at the flea market. Yeah. <laughs> Want to go see if there's some cute fellas at the flea market? <laughs> This is serious <laughs> trash, trashy dating advice. I like it. <laughs> hey girls, untapped resource over at the flea market. <laughs> I mean, you never know. You never know. You never That's know. the thing. You never know. Yeah. Um, but so you don't actually see your competition in person. You only imagine who are they swiping uh, on, not swiping on, how many people are they dating, this and that. Um, but then in a sense, you're in a competition with the person's phone and their ability to swipe, right? right. Like dismiss people quicker. Yeah. I mean, yep. I'm sure from your perspective too, right? It's like, yeah. you're just kind of throwing people away. Yeah. I literally. mean, I have no idea how many times I was dismissed, right? Like, I, I don't even know how thing. many times I was liked because we had to both like each other for it to work. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, I feel like the older you get and the single, you more single you are, but want to be with a partner, then there's just the competition of like what society tells you where you should be. Mm. You know, if your friends are all married and having kids, like you start to feel like you can't really like vibe with them as much. And you know, interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the dating world is rough, but I just don't. Yeah. I've been out of it long enough that I don't necessarily remember the competition so much. I, I feel like I noticed the most competition when it was my friends and I all single mm. going out. And yeah. Because things. right. That makes sense. Like we wanted the best for each other, but also it's like, but you're all in the same forces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're exactly. like in our twenties, you know, like, right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And your priorities are different too, right? You're mm-hmm. just, your brain is different. Mm-hmm. So interesting. I'm glad we touched on it briefly even. Yeah. Just cause like I, I was, that was one that I, we didn't touch on. And I was like, oh man, I don't want to let this episode go without asking <laughs> you about it. <clears throat> Cause I'm sure it's really relatable for so many warriors, yeah. right. That are currently dating or had uh, dated for a long time yeah. or whatever the situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so interesting. Yeah. All right. Warriors. Well, we hope that some of this resonates with you, mm-hmm. this idea of unspoken competition in our world. Um, what were some of the messages that you were given as, as kids or adolescents or into your adulthood about um, being in competition? Yeah. Were you in overt competition situations? Does competition feel good to you? Mm-hmm. Um, does it nourish you and feel like it motivates you and supports your well being? Is it a little bit more of a struggle for you? Like it is for me and for Abby sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, And in which areas of your life do you notice it coming up the most? Yeah. Is it work? Is it relationships? Is it Mm -hmm. your home life? Yeah. Is it just the world at large? You know, I mean, is it all of the above? Yes. (laughs) Who are you in competition with others or yourself? Yes. Older exactly. versions of you or versions future that haven't you existed that, yet. Yeah. Yeah. Future you that you assume should be ready, ready to be. And if they're not, what goes on, right? Like when you're in competition, what do you feel like? That's the biggest, I think, reflection point we'd like you to consider. Um, when you think about this, what does it feel like to be in competition? Yes. What do you notice arise in your thoughts, in your mind and body? Do you have practices that you go to, to help you navigate losses or failures, um, or just the struggle? Right. Yeah. So we hope that you mull it over. Yes. (laughs) All right. Mull it. <laughs> mull it over. <laughs> like mull it. Um, of course. <laughs> so, Marco, do you have a win of the week? Win of the week. <laughs> I do. And actually, it's perfect for this topic because um, we're talking about competition and we've talked a lot about small business today mm-hmm. and just what it feels like in the work world. So, um, this past weekend, I was a vendor at a local pride celebration event at an awesome, um, spot here. It's an interactive play space on Long Island called social playhouse. 
and they have food and drinks and a giant play area for kids. And they host birthday parties and events all the time. They're awesome. I did two author visits there once last summer and then once this past spring break. And the owners are amazing. And um, speaking of competition, like we don't do the same thing. We're not in competition with each other, but we also appreciate and elevate each other. We, yeah. we, we share each other to other businesses and, you know, you should, oh, you have looking for a birthday party space. You should definitely go here, you know, and they've offered my services to people that have come through yeah. their doors too. So that's, that's a nice, um, compliment to this episode anyway. So, um, as a vendor there, I was able to sit and sell my book, my children's book, which was awesome. I was able to connect with some more Long Island families and parents and kids. I did a read out of my book and um, made some sales, which is always a win. Yes. And I got to connect with other small businesses who That's did awesome. other do other things for me, but um, we were able to you know, to buy from each other, mm-hmm. take down each other's information, stay connected on social media right. and hopefully find ways to keep supporting it again, right. just with the mentality that like, even if people don't do what we do, we can still take time out of our day just to be of service by and making other people feel good. Right. right. Like I can't tell you how good it feels when somebody reshares something of mine on Instagram stories, or even makes a whole post about it, sharing pictures of their kids with my book or from my classes or, you know, the directors of some of the schools I work for, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it just, they don't even realize how much it can impact me. Right. And they're doing it because they want to, I, at least I assume. And that feels awesome. And it makes me want to do that exact same thing for yes. other people. Right. It just reminds me of the beauty and the good in, in humanity. So it was such a huge win just being able to be in community with other Long Island business owners and connect and support each other. It's awesome. That's huge. Yeah. I love that one. Thanks. It was a good yeah. one. All right, warriors. Well, thank you so much for tuning in this week. We love you. Mm-hmm. If you are interested in connecting, you can find us on Instagram at anxiety warriors podcast, or you can shoot us an email or both. We're at anxiety warriors podcast at gmail.com. Let us know if you have wins of the week. You'd love us to hear about. If you think you'd be a great fit as a guest on our show, let's connect and hear a little bit about your story so we can help you tell it here on our podcast. Um, or if you have topic ideas for us, shout them out. What do you want to hear us chat about on the show that we haven't yet? Um, and if you can, please take two seconds, smash that five-star rating on Apple podcasts, Spotify. We're also on Amazon music. Please like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also if you do not have any anxiety warriors podcast swag, you need to remedy that right now, jump into our show notes and, um, log into our threadless shop. See all the cool stuff we have selling over there. Yes. Yes. Hit pause right now and look at the show notes. That's right. And click that button and buy a gift for yourself because you should treat yourself, treat yourself. And buy a gift for a friend because you should treat your friend. Because no competition. That's you can both right. Have same cool swag. And then it's a triple win. A win for you, a win for a friend, and a win for us because you're supporting our show. That's right. And it would feel so awesome. Woo. So grab that swag, Warriors. You will look so good in it or look good holding it or whatever it is you purchase. Wearing it, holding it, using it so many cool designs over there. So we hope you grab something for you and a friend today. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much for going on this journey with us. We are so grateful we get to do this with you. Till next time.